What we're going to do is spend a little bit of time here going through your homework problems just to make sure that you are writing your net ionic equations correctly. For number one, we're reacting some aqueous or aqueous, you could say it either way, barium chloride with some aqueous sodium phosphate. I know that's a double displacement reaction because I see a compound being added to another compound. The barium is going to go with the phosphate, the sodium is going to go with the chloride. Now we know the states of matter of our reactants because they provided it for us, but we do need to figure out the states of matter on our would-be products. So we need to check out barium phosphate. So the way I knew that barium phosphate was a solid was that I went to our class solubility chart and I found phosphates down here near the bottom. Phosphates are going to be soluble if you combine that phosphate ion with alkali ions. And if you forget which ones the alkali ions are, they're up here at the top of the page. Uh, hydrogen or ammonium. Well, we're making barium phosphate. Barium is not an alkali ion. It's not either one of these. So barium falls into that all others list. Barium phosphate is insoluble, does not dissolve in water. So I made the state of matter for that one a solid. Now, sodium chloride, you might be familiar with sodium chloride because that's just table salt, and maybe you're thinking, well, that's a solid. It is, unless there's water around. And while we don't come out and write the H2O uh, explicitly in our balanced chemical equation, anytime you have AQ as your states of matter, AQ means aqueous, dissolved in water. So there's water around, even though we're not writing H2O anywhere. So yes, salt is a solid unless there's water around and then that salt will dissolve in that water. So state of matter there is aqueous. When we go to break up our barium chloride into its ions, we wanna make sure as you're checking your homework here, make sure that all of your ions have pieces. Uh, excuse me, all of your pieces are ions that your barium is not just Ba, but it has to be barium with a charge because neutral element barium is a different thing than barium, the ion with a plus two charge. So make sure that all of your little pieces have charges on them. The other thing to be on the lookout for that all of your little pieces have states of matter that go along with them. So because these two pieces came from our barium chloride, which was aqueous, our pieces are gonna be aqueous as well. Some people, when they're first doing net ionic equations, they see this chlorine by themselves and they say, is this Hofbrinkel chlorine? Should I be writing that as Cl little two? The Hofbrinkel chlorine is when you have the neutral element chlorine. And that's not what we're talking about in this problem. We're talking about the ion chloride with a charge of minus one. So this isn't Hofbrinkel chlorine, it's the ion chloride. So we don't have to write Cl little two. Instead, we say that there are six separate chloride ions with a minus one charge. Our sodium phosphate, when we go to break that up, we break it up into sodium and phosphate ions. Some people, when they're first doing net ionic equations, accidentally break up this phosphate into phosphide and oxide ions separately. The name of this compound is sodium phosphate. So when we go to break that up, we're gonna break it up into sodium ions and phosphate ions. Now our barium phosphate that we determined was a solid looks exactly the same in our net ionic or our complete ionic equation here. We're gonna keep our solids look exactly the same all the way down throughout all three lines. The reason we keep that barium phosphate together in our complete ionic equation is because that's what it looks like at the particle level. The reason your eyes can see precipitates, the reason they can see these solids is because the barium and the phosphate stay stuck together in big clumps that are large enough for your eyes to see. When things are aqueous, the water goes in and pulls those particles apart into things that are too small for your eyes to see. So we write them apart because that's what it really looks like. In number one, our spectator ions are our chlorides and our sodiums. When you compare the chlorides on the left, 6Cl minus aqueous, to the ones on the right, 6Cl minus aqueous, they're exactly the same. Nothing happened to the chloride throughout the reaction. So our 
uh, our chloride's a spectator. For the same reason, our sodium ions are spectators as well. When we cancel out our spectators, the things that we have left are three barium ions and two phosphate ions that can come together to make our precipitate barium phosphate. When you get to that last line, the complete ionic equation, net ionic equation line, when you get here, that net ionic equation line, it should just make some logical sense. Could you take three bariums and two phosphates, combine them, and make Ba3PO42 out of those pieces? Yes. If the balancing wasn't right, like you had two bariums over here and three over here, something's not right there. Or let's say you had chloride left over on the left-hand side, but not on the right-hand side. It should just make some logical sense.